Hello silver friends, this is Jolie from Quicksilver Hair and today we're going to talk about the primary differences between hard water and soft water on silver hair. If you've been around the silver hair community for any length of time, you've probably heard that hard water isn't that great for silver hair and it's not because it deposits minerals on the hair and can cause staining. But soft water is not free of issues either. While it's ideal, there are still a couple of things you wanna know about soft water. And if you've been struggling with your hair and you have soft water, you may find out why in this video. So if this all sounds interesting to you, let's get to it. So right off the bat, the main differences between hard water and soft water on our hair are that on silver hair, hard water can cause dryness, brittleness, breakage, frizz, and ultimately you can end up with the dreaded staining. On curly hair, it can also cause dryness, brittleness, breakage, and frizz, and loss of curl definition. You will notice that your curl families just don't clump together as well as they should when you've got a buildup of hard water on your hair. With soft water and silver hair, you may notice that your hair is dull and lifeless looking, and that is a sure sign that there is a buildup of conditioning agents on your hair. With silver curly hair, you may notice a loss of curl retention. This seems to be one of the major issues with soft water. To understand the differences between hard water and soft water, we need to understand what they are. Hard water is water that contains a high concentration of minerals such as calcium carbonate, magnesium, copper, iron, etc. The minerals in hard water will accumulate around your faucets and your appliances and your fixtures. That same mineral deposit on the fixtures can deposit on your hair. For perspective, River water is usually hard water because it is moving across the Earth's surface and it's picking up minerals as it goes and assimilating them into the water and then that water is brought into your home. What is soft water? It is water that has been treated with salt usually and that salt creates an ion exchange between the minerals in the water and the salt and the minerals are removed from the water. In general, if it helps for perspective, rainwater is typically soft water because it has not moved across the Earth's surface and picked up all of the minerals like a river has. The mineral content of the water is what affects your hair. So those minerals like calcium and magnesium and copper and iron will eventually build up over your hair if you do not do something about it to stop them. This is one of the most common issues I see with silver hair aside from sun and heat damage. The effects of hard water on our hair once it starts to build up can be dryness, dullness, brittleness, breakage, itchy scalp, um, you can have an issue with a lack of lather with your shampoos and you can ev eventually and ultimately end up with staining on your gray hair. The effects of soft water on our hair are that it is conditioning, which is really great, and this helps to prevent breakage and damage. However, it can lead to other issues like greasy scalp, greasy hair, and a lackluster dullness to your hair if product begins to build up because it is not being rinsed away fully with your water. The next issue to consider with hard water and soft water is their pH. The pH of hard water is over seven, which makes it slightly alkaline. The pH of soft water is under seven, which makes it slightly acidic. The natural pH of natural untouched hair, so virgin hair, is 4.5 to 5.5. So that's why our hair loves soft water, because that's the natural state our hair wants to be in with the pH. This is also why um, like an apple cider vinegar works for people with hard water because the pH of apple cider vinegar closely matches the pH of our hair and brings that alkalinity back down to an acidic level. With soft water, something like Malibu C Undo Goo with a pH of 9.5 is more alkaline and can pull some alkalinity into the hair and leaving it less acidic, which helps open up the cuticle and dissolve anything that's accumulated in the cuticle and carry it away. So that's why a product like Undo Goo is very good for people with soft water and buildup. 
Let's get into how to determine your water hardness. There are visual cues with hard water. One is that shampoo doesn't lather as good as it should. You may notice if you have sensitivities in your skin that your skin is itchy or irritated or your scalp is itchy and irritated. Your hair may be dry, brittle, and having that rough feeling and you may have a lot of breakage. Beyond that, there are visual cues in your home. You will notice that there will be, you know, that buildup around your faucets and shower heads. If you have a high iron content, you'll notice a red ring around the inside of your toilet tank. So you can take the lid off and take a look. And if there's a red ring around that, it's a telltale sign that you probably have high iron content in your water. This can be seen in your white hair as a rusty color on your hair. If you want to know for sure what your water hardness is and the mineral content in your water, you can contact your local water authority. Our water authority just sent out our little booklet, which it just came right before I was going to film this. So this brochure does not show us the uh, water hardness, but if I open it all the way up, it has a table in it that shows all of the minerals in our water. And you can always contact your local water authority and they'll tell you what the water hardness is coming out of the water plant nearest you. Now, you can also um, have your water tested by the city, the county, or you can buy at-home water tests to see what the water hardness actually is. The solutions for hard water include a whole home water filter or water softener, which isn't ideal for everyone. Sometimes there's not room for it or money for it. The next solution for hard water is to use a shower filter, and I'll show you what mine looks like here. This one is from Aquabliss. It's on my shower head and you can even see it helps prevent the calcium from forming on the shower head. So you know that it is actually helping filter out hard water. They're easy to install. They're easy to replace the cartridges. You do need a little bit of oomph to tighten them down so that they don't leak. But other than that, it's super simple. It's an easy solution and it's not that expensive. I replace mine every three months. Next up for hard water solutions is what you use on your wash day. I would highly suggest that you don't use sulfate based shampoos. So you want to get a sulfate free shampoo and you want to make sure that you're using moisturizing and conditioning conditioner and leave in to help add back in some conditioning to your hair. After that, you would want to routinely use a chelating shampoo. So you may need to use this once a week. You might need to use it once every two weeks, three weeks or a month. It depends on how hard your water is and how much your hair is picking up those minerals. But a chelating shampoo is designed to grab the minerals from your hair, break them down, and carry them away. Some chelating ingredients to look for are tetrasodium EDTA, disodium EDTA, EDTA, citric acid, phytic acid, um, sodium phytate. Those are all chelating agents. Many shampoos have chelating agents in them, like citric acid, but that's actually in the formula for the formula's sake. It helps to balance the pH and it probably has very little effect on your hair. So you do want to look for products that are marketed as chelating. However, there are some exceptions like Seen Shampoo has two chelating agents in it and Loma's Essential Shampoo is actually a clarifying shampoo because it has sodium phytate in it, which is a very effective chelating agent. So there are exceptions but you kind of have to know a little bit more about those ingredients and how they are used in formulas. So I would definitely stick to finding a product that says it is chelating. Another solution for hard water, as I previously mentioned, is a vinegar rinse. If you take a quart of water with one third of a cup of vinegar and put it in a bowl, you can dunk your head and your hair into that bowl and just kind of swish it around for a few minutes, then dump the water on your hair rinse it, shampoo, and condition as normal, and carry on. There are many people that swear by this, and that's all they do for their silver hair to remove mineral buildup. I will give you a word of caution here that low porosity hair really shouldn't use vinegar because it tightens the cuticle down a little bit too much, and you can have some issues with conditioning after that. The next solution is bottled water. You can wash your hair in bottled water. Now it should go without saying that you don't wanna use mineral water because you're just putting minerals back on your hair. But if you live in an area where maybe you have a well and there's just nothing you can do about the water that's coming out of that tap, you may want to use bottled water to wash your hair. 
you can either wash your hair completely in distilled or filtered water, or you can rinse your hair in distilled or filtered water to mitigate some of that buildup from some of the harder water or some of the water that has maybe a high iron content. So solutions for soft water, my number one recommendation is to rinse, 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 and repeat, rinse, rinse, rinse. Because if you've lived with soft water, you know that feeling when you're washing your hands with soap and you just can't get the soap off, that's happening to your hair. You're not getting the soap off enough and that can cause that dullness and that buildup. So be really careful that you are rinsing your hair enough so that you can condition it properly and that you aren't getting that buildup. So my main recommendation for your wash day routine with soft water is likely that you don't need silicones. Silicones are harder to remove with soft water, so you might consider that that could be an issue for you. In soft water, you also want to make sure that maybe you use volumizing products so that you don't have too much conditioning agents and you can add some of the volume that you lose with the soft water back in. I also recommend that if you have soft water that you learn to add clarifying to your routine. You might need to do this once a week, you may need to do it once every 10 days, but Malibu C Undo Goo Shampoo is great for soft water because it has that higher pH of 9 plus and it contains sodium C1416 olefin sulfonate, which is great at removing product buildup, especially silicones, polyquats, and the softening agents in conditioners. That wraps it up for this video. I hope you found this information helpful. Everything that I have discussed in this video is linked below, including a more expansive blog post that I did on the subject that also has all the products and everything that I've talked about in this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so now because I would love to see you next time. As always, shine on.